This is my son's Nintendo Switch, and it has a problem. Well, specifically, the Joy-Con controllers have problems. More than one of them drift. You can let go the joystick entirely and still find your character wandering off into the distance. And this controller here has another issue nearly as bad. After my 11-year-old dropped it, you can no longer push the joystick button in and get action, which is a requirement for many games. So today, we're going to replace the joysticks in these Joy-Cons, and we're going to do it with all new hardware that promises it will never, ever develop drift issues. Here we go. These are the new joysticks, and they're built using Hall Effect sensors. If all you care about is the install process, check the chapters below and you can jump forward to that. Those instructions will work regardless of what joysticks you bought. But to understand why these joysticks are better than standard options, we have to understand how regular joysticks work and how these are different. Most joysticks found in modern gaming controllers, whether that's PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo Switch, rely on potentiometer sensors. You can check out iFix's full explanation of how they work because it's fascinating, but in short, the potentiometer works by rubbing a wiper across the material with a predictable electrical resistance value, and that allows the controller to measure position. Then a spring returns the stick to center. But over time, the parts wear out, and either it doesn't sense movement as well as it used to, or the spring stops returning the stick to perfect center, and you get drift. Grime, dust, and other particulates make the problem worse, which is why cleaning your joysticks can help sometimes, and that's a good place to start. But it will ultimately, you'll have to replace the joysticks. Hall effect sensors are better because they ditch the materials and wipers in favor of magnets. No more rubbing means no more wear down. Just keep in mind that this probably won't eliminate all drift forever, since there's still a spring involved for one but it should take a lot longer than before. Let's get started on ripping these Joy-Cons apart. So off screen, I already did this once just to get a feel for the tools and to remember how to do it in the first place. And I'm gonna say right now, do not use these tools. This spudger is so thick, it won't work for anything. This Y-wing tip doesn't actually fit the Y-wing screws at all. This spudger is still too thick, and these tweezers are so incredibly big that I accidentally stripped my battery wires on this particular controller. You get what you pay for. You can buy these kits from Amazon for cheaper than straight through iFixit, but you should use iFixit tools or other high quality tools instead. I will not use these again. To get started, we're gonna turn over the controller and you're gonna find four Y-wing screws that are all the same size. You'll take your Y-wing tip and just pull them out. And since they are all the same size, you can keep these screws grouped together. But in the future, you want to have a way to sort the screw sizes because the order will matter. I recommend some kind of solution like the iFixit magnetic kit or even one of its lids from its screwdrivers kits. But anything you have that lets you write down what goes where will do. Once you have all four screws pulled out, you will very carefully use a spudger to slip into one of the seams along here and just look for anything that kind of works. I find that this top corner tends to go really well and gives you a nice push there. Now you don't have too much to worry about in the way of ribbon cables being sliced while you do this. But what you do need to worry about is that once you get that purchase and you start to open this, you have to be very gentle because there is a ribbon cable attached and you two ribbon cables attached and you don't want to pull them apart. There they are right there. And you can set this top off to the side. The next thing we're gonna deal with is this battery. Now the battery is just very lightly glued down. So you can take your spudger, insert at the side and pull up and it will just pop out essentially. It practically isn't glued in this case. And the other thing we need to deal with is the connector. Now you have to be very careful, and this is where I ended up breaking it. If you have a spudger, it may help, but you want to pull upwards at the connection point, not out, but straight up. That is how it connects, and you wanna make sure you don't pull on these other two wires that are right there as well. So grab on as low as you can, try to get into the connector if you can, and give it a pull up. And I'm being very gentle, because what I don't wanna do is pull the wires out in the process. 
There you go. So it went straight up. And again, from here, not from the wires, or you can pull them out. And that's exactly what happened to trying to use the too thick of a tweezer, is it pulled out of the connectors. I may be able to repair that, or I might have to replace the battery entirely. Now that we have this pulled out, we can start working on the other screws. Now on this side, there are three points to remove. On the other controller, there are five. You'll find a Phillips screw here, here, and here. I'm not sure if there's a size difference in these. So what I'll do is pull out one screw and actually I need to switch tips because I'm still using my Y-wing and I need to go over to Phillips and I will keep them in a placing that is reminiscent to what they're like in this Joy-Con. Screw two. It's actually the same size as top left so you, won't have, you don't have to worry about confusing that one. And then screw three is in the bottom left and it's also the same length. So the good news is when you're doing this side controller you won't have to worry about keeping everything straight. Now we'll pull out the frame and I'm just feeling for anything that's tight. I suspect there's yet another ribbon cable that I don't want to pull off by accident. Well, there is a ribbon cable down here. So you want to be very careful as you're pulling up. I'm going to go ahead and reach in, lift the zip connector so that I can then pull the ribbon cable out and keep track of this piece as well. And now we have easy access to the joystick itself. These are also Phillips screws. You have one here and one here and a ribbon connector. You can use your tweezers to lift the ribbon connector, the zip connector slot, and then pull the ribbon out gently. And then we'll remove our two screws, which are also the same size. And then the joystick will come right out. When you compare the old versus the new, and the cap is missing on this one, you almost can't tell the difference. The entire difference between the Hall effect and the potentiometer is on the inside. There are no rubbing parts in here. The design is on purpose, just so you can swap them out without any real difference to be had. And if you get confused as to which is which, your old has a blue connector, your new has a gold connector. Unless Nintendo's changed that since this joystick. So try to keep them straight. And it will just slide right into place exactly where the old one fit. You may just have to work it a little bit, get it through. Now you want to hold on a little bit because it's going to want to push against the joystick. Grab your screws. And we're basically going to do everything in the opposite order that we just did. We'll take our connector, this ribbon cable, and slide it back in. Just slide, close that. If your connector came off like mine did, because you weren't being careful enough like I wasn't, you'll just use your sc your screwdriver to, or your tweezers to push it back on. Before you put the frame on, you'll need to reconnect this very short ribbon cable. And then close the connection point, and then slide on the mid frame. This piece pulls up through here, curls around the opening, slides into here. You can use some tweezers to tuck it in proper. Yeah, we're going to screw on the mid frame first, just to make that a little easier. So again, these were all the same size, unlike the other side of the controller. One on the bottom, one off to the side, then up top. If you forgot to connect earlier, you still do have access here. So we'll use our tweezers to tuck the cord in. It has grooves that it'll slide right into like an old VCR. That's pre-DVDs for you youngins. Now we'll reattach the battery. I find it easier to put the battery down in first. And then you're going to push directly down. Again, you're going to avoid the other wires. Try not to accidentally pull them out in the process. Slide underneath. Once you have it in the proper spot, you're just going to push down to seat it. And the good news is we're just about done. Close up the controller. And again, there are, there are slots for everything to kind of fall right into. It'll just squeeze together. Switch back to your Y tip or switch over to a Y tip screwdriver if you're using a separate one. Drop them right in. And that's put together. Now, we'll still have to do the recalibration on the Nintendo Switch, but before we do that, let's do the other side controller because the process is just a little bit different. It starts the same. We're gonna turn over and we're gonna remove four Y-shaped screws that are exactly the same size. Now that we've got the four out, again, you're gonna use a spudger to split apart. And I do find it's easiest to go from the top left on this one as well, just to get it started. As before, you wanna be somewhat careful because while you won't slice a ribbon cable, there's two attached and you don't want to pull them apart. And we're just going to fold open kind of like a book. And the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery because you may have seen the button pushes were being detected and it's actually powered and doing stuff. Just like before, we're going to avoid two wires that are in the way, get down to the connector and do a pull up maneuver. Not outwards, but 
upwards. And the next part is to pull out the battery. Again, won't take much. It's not really glued down. This is where the process deviates from before. We're gonna switch over to our Phillips screwdriver and there are more screws now. There are one, two, three, four, five screws to deal with. This top left, bottom right, and lowest right are the same size, a longer screw. This top right and bottom left are a shorter screw. So you want to keep these straight and in order. You don't want to put a long screw where a shallow screw needs to be. We're going to start with the top left. And when I put them in my container, I put them in the exact configuration that they're going to go back in to help me keep this straight. Top right, bottom left, bottom right, lowest right. Now the mid-frame is going to want to come off at this point. Again, you need to do this carefully. There's another ribbon cable under here and you don't want to pull it out. It's going to make your life a lot harder if you do. So pull over. Once we fold this open carefully like a book, we're going to lift this zipped connector and then the ribbon will slide out. While we're at it, we can go ahead and lift this one as well and slide this ribbon out. You might be tempted to slide these out. Don't bother. You don't need to. We had to slide this ribbon cable out because it hides a screw that we need to take out. These are still Phillips screwdrivers and these next two are once again the same size, but I would keep them grouped together. These are holding the joystick in. Here's the other one. So the last thing we need to do is pull the ribbon cable out. We're going to lift the zip connector just like the rest and then just pull the ribbon cable out gently and then the joystick will slide right out. Careful with the seal around and we'll grab the new one and we're basically going to just reverse everything. Slide the new joystick in. It's a tight fit with these Hall Effects ones. Just be careful and gentle and it'll eventually slip through. And you're gonna have to hold the assembly up for now. Otherwise the joystick will just push right back through. So the first thing we're gonna do is attach the screws to make that a little bit easier. Now you've noticed my circuit board's kind of been moving about a bit as I do all this. So after we get these screws connected and the second one goes underneath the ribbon cable, we're going to turn over and make sure all the buttons are still situated and clicky. You'll, ho you'll hold onto the back of the circuit board with your thumbs and just give them a quick test. If they're still good, flip back over. Otherwise you've got the trouble of going in and setting everything in place. The good news about the buttons is they only fit one way. If your shoulder button pops off, no big deal. That's easy to fix. So we're going to reattach this ribbon cable. Again, just push until you feel a little resistance. No need to push with all your might and try and force it all the way in. It doesn't go in as far as you think it does. And then we'll reattach the joystick ribbon cable. Pull back, look for the hole that it slides into and push in. Only as much as until you feel it lock into place and lock the SIF connect. And you can even give it a just the slightest tug to make sure it's fully locked. And then we'll attach the ribbon cable for the mid frame. And this, the most finicky one of all, I always hate doing it. So good luck. Oh, and for the first time ever, I got that without much trouble. If your shoulder button fell off, this is the time you can put it back on. Just make sure the spring goes into this little housing right here and this lip goes underneath the lip over here. And you know you've got it right if you can hear a click when you push. Hold it in place while you gently pull the midframe back over and drop it where it belongs. And now we begin to do the screws that go up here. Remember, long, short, long, short, long. Now I've kept them in that configuration, so here's a long. Short goes top right. I make I recommend a magnetic tip for this because it goes in pretty deep. Doesn't take very many turns and don't crank it down. You don't want to break a circuit board. Long bottom left, short bottom right, and then along in the lowest right corner. Now our battery goes back in. I like to put the battery in first. The ribbon goes towards this hole right here. That's the cavity for it to come through. Once we get the battery back in, we're going to push the connector straight down, not forwards but downwards. You'll gently seat it into place and then give it the last final push once you've got it locked. But you'll just find it's a little bit finicky. Ah, yeah. See now I've got it seated and then I push and it locks. You'll notice red on left, black on right, and you can kind of see the metal peeking through this connector. That's how you know you've got it faced the correct orientation and not upside down. Now that we've got the battery seated, we're just about done. We're going to close the casing, switch back to our Y tip screwdriver and place the final four screws back in. And let me just demonstrate how bad 
this screwdriver is. This is also a wide tip and it even looks fairly similar in size. But when I go to turn the screws, for one, it's not magnetic, so no help there. But for two, it can't maintain grip. And that's as far as it will turn it. Switch over to the properly sized tip and we get a lot more. There's just no grip on this. Terrible tools. But at least to Nintendo's credit, placing these joysticks doesn't require any amount of soldering, unlike some other console controllers I know. And now we have new Hall Effect joysticks. They feel a little more resistant than the old ones. The last thing we need to do is calibrate them using the Nintendo Switch. All right, to calibrate these, attach them like always. And these, these will, see how they're drifting right now? They will drift until you fix this. So we're gonna go down to settings, head down to controllers and sensors, and then head down to calibrate control sticks. Tilt the stick that you wanna calibrate. See how far off it is right now? Move the stick towards the triangle and release it. Move the stick towards the triangle and release it. Rotate the stick in circles two to three times. Calibration complete. And yep, that's now centered unlike before. Now we need to calibrate the other one. There we go, nice and calibrated. And so we're set. So that may take you a while, but it's not too bad. No soldering involved. Like I said, tools that come with the kits you can find on Amazon are garbage. Don't use them. You may end up breaking your controller and that'll just cost you more money in the long run. You can save enough money by buying the kits through Amazon and then ordering tools elsewhere to justify doing that. And you'll get the kits sooner. I highly recommend iFixit tools. I am recommending their tools just because they're the best you can buy. But if you already have good quality tools, use those assuming you've got the right tips. But the good news is now this switch will work correctly for my son and he won't go drifting off into space again, at least not in video games. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And until next time, bye.